Hello everyone, today we will talk about this space crease. This space crease is a comprehensive, free and open source research information management system. It is based on this space, providing broader functionalities and an expanded data model, relying on its large community. The space crease is compliant with and supports key international standards, facilitating interoperability and data transfer. The space crease enables secure, integrated and interoperable research information and data management in a single solution. In today's video, we will show a comprehensive demo of the powerful features of the space crease. First of all, the space crease is an extension of the space. So, if you're already familiar with the space platform and the space community, this space Chris is built on top of the space. So everything that is available on the space is also available in the space Chris. This space Chris is just a more comprehensive platform with more advanced features and tailored to the need of a modern repository and current research information system. So it's based on the space seven that is the latest platform and is a big step forward compared to the previous versions. The goal of this platform, or one of the several goals, is to create a public accessible portal that can help the institutions to disseminate the result of all the research activity to the world. This to meet the objective of open science, but also to increase the possibility of collaborations with the industry, with other research institutions, and to work as a showcase for universities. Let's start talking about the homepage. The homepage is essentially the homepage of this portal, where you have several components that can be arranged into the homepage, starting from just descriptive content that can be managed by administrators. So you can give the context of your initiative, you can include a couple of different widgets that provide dynamic behavior. So you can include global search that allows the user to perform a search across all the information available in the repository and you can summarize the content of your repository using some infographics. In this demo, for instance, we give a prominent position to the research output that usually are publications, products, datasets, software and patent, projects and people. But you can also decide to use a different aggregation of information in your repository or to hide this infographic completely. And we can provide also an ordered list of content according to different criteria, like the recent submission, so that the recent content that has been added into the repository, or the content that is most used in the repository, or the most accessed, you have additional descriptive part to give more information about your institution, your project, and so on. One characteristic of the DSpace crease over the basic DSpace is that the home page can be easily adapted to your needs. So these different components can be placed in a different order, can be activated or deactivated without modifying the, the Angular source code of the repository. In the basic DSpace, everything is much more coded oriented. So with a basic DSpace, you have to modify the source code. In DSpace Chris, you have configuration files that allows you to arrange these different elements. This also leaves room for future extensions. So if you need to have a specific component in the home page, we can just, uh, we can just implement this component and you can configure it and customize the source, source code. And this is important for the maintainability of the platform. Other than the homepage in the top navigation bar, we usually include links 
different sub pages, sub home pages that we call explore pages that allow you to go deeper on specific aspects of your crisis system. So you can have second level home pages dedicated to the publication, to the research output in general, where you can present an advanced search that is a specialized, the research output in this case. You can present list of contents that are limited to the research output. So in the home page, you could have a mixture of new content, publication, data set, organizational unit, project, all together, because you are the home page of the repository. And this is what is changing in repository at a global level. When you go on the explore page, for instance, of the research output, you get a focus on the research output. You can see that the funding looks slightly different because of a different configuration and, of course, the search in index for the advanced search are different than the one provided for research outputs because they are described in a different way. One of the most powerful characteristics of these space scripts is the usage of Solar as a search engine. So it's the same that also this space, the basic this space use, but with much more flexibility. By default, when you perform a search, everything in the system is in the scope of your search. So we're searching for publication, for person, for funding, project, organization unity, unit, and so on. This type of record or item types are also named in the space entities and can be customized. This is what we call data model and represent the way that your institution wants to express and visualize all the research activities and the context of these research activities at your institution. Of course, this space Chris is out of the box enabled with a data model that is also based on international standards and is based on the information space that has been designed by OpenAir that is nowadays used worldwide and not just at European level. So, normally speaking, we talk about Serif and OpenAir as the two standards to express the data model. And in this data model, we have three macro categories for research output. We have publication, patent, and product, where product is used for datasets, software, etc. These research outputs are connected with other entities in the information space, like person, so your researcher, the organization unit, so the department, the faculty, and the external university, for example, that collaborated with you but also are linked to project funding. Project is an umbrella for scientific initiative, so it's more like research lines are often used as a synonymous in other universities, or scientific project, not necessarily something that has been funded. Often a scientific project has received funding maybe more than once in several rounds of funding from different funding programs. So you can express this rich data model in this space script, but you can also decide to adopt a simplified data model for your instance, if you don't want to track all this aspect, or you can introduce some of these entities later on you don't need to start with all the wall of information space if you don't like. So that said, one important characteristic is that if I perform a search, for instance, with the last name Bollini, I will get all the matching result in the different entry. But I can drill down to look just to the publication, for instance, or the person. Or I can use different criteria to narrow down my search. All these filter and facets can be configured in the system, so you can decide which metadata are used to represent a specific facets if you define metadata that are custom of your institution. We can also use this metadata in the search to
to narrow down research results. One interesting aspect is that if I click to look to the tail of a publication, for instance, in the metadata, you will see that other entities are also linked. So in this case, you see Andrea Bollini that is linked and for science. This means that this publication's author is Andrea Bollini and I can navigate the information in the system just following this link. Before following this link, just let me give you a couple of other information about the publication itself. The metadata that are present in this page depends on the configuration. So you can decide to have a richer or a simpler view, detailed view of the publication. And you can organize this information in several different ways that I will show you in a couple of examples soon. Other than metadata, you also have access to the actual content. So in this case, you will see that the publication has just one file attached to it, that is in this case a PDF file. And this individual PDF file has some metadata. So this space Chris is able to check metadata at the level of the single file. So you can, if you have multiple file, uh, file one file represent a journal article, another file could represent a supplementary data set or a PowerPoint used at a specific conference or could be the recording of a presentation and so on. You have the option to download the raw file or eventually also depending on the format of the file and the usage of additional data that, uh, that we provide, you could be able to interact with this file in a more efficient way. For instance, in the case of the PDF, you can just use a PDF viewer in the browser. At the bottom of this page, you see also the presentation of what we call metrics. In this specific case, there are two internal metrics. One is the number of visualizations of the metadata of the item, and the other one is the number of downloads of the PDF file. But we will see later that according to the metadata of the publication of the record we are seeing, we could have access to other metrics as well. So let's move to the researcher profile. In this case, there is a list of all the publication and I have a general section where I can include biographic information about the researcher, eventually also a picture, references about main affiliations and external links to research output that are authored by the specific researcher and metrics for this research and so on. Looking to the research output, also this section is, com is configurable so you can decide which filter you want to offer at individual researcher level and which visualization you want to offer. This is just for demo purpose. We show that you can visualize the result using a pie chart or you can use a bar chart or different pie charts that have different orientations, left to right or right to left in terms of timing. All these charts are also interactive, so I can click on a specific uh, slice and trigger automatically all the list of search results. I want to take the chance of looking into this publication to show you that in this specific case, we also have integration with alternative metrics. So in this case, we're able to show the Alternative Metrics badge, the Plumax and the Dimension badge. As you see here for this publication, you also have the Scopus citation and the Web of Science citation number. So the Space Chris support all of these databases out of the box if you have valid subscriptions with these databases. But there are some differences. In, this ca in the case of Scopus and Web of Science, you're able to grab this information from the external data source and store this information directly in the CRIS system. 
So this number is part of the data that is stored in the Chris system. And this means that you can use this information to perform ranking, to sort the record. You can export the record and have this information in an Excel file to further process this data. In the case of alternative metrics, and PlumX and Dimensions, the integration is only at the level of user interface. So these data are retrieved automatically from this external system, but in the user browser. This means that you don't have this information available when you export the data, or if you want to further analyze the data in your repository. So the number six expressed here by Dimension is not a number that you own that is stored into the database that you can use for further elaboration. So right now, alternative metrics, PlumX and Dimension don't require a subscription. You're able to visualize this information for academic purpose on your website for any publication that has been already indexed by these external databases. So if your publication have a DOI, essentially, you will be able to get this information displayed at the repository level. This means that the lookups are done dynamically every time a visitor watches this page. It's not stored locally on the servers, and this is the way that these external databases want the integration to work. So, essentially, they provide a JavaScript widget that, can, that we can embed embed in this page, but it's just a JavaScript and each time that you visit this page, this JavaScript query their external database and they will provide back the information. If you're not comfortable with using Scopus database or the Web of Science database for citation, what I could suggest is also to look to the Open Citation project. This is something that we have not yet integrated in with the Space Chris, but it will be very interesting to work on such a project in the future. In this way, we will just make a development effort one time, but you don't have to pay a subscription to this external service because Open Citation is about open data. And they started to have a decent coverage and good references for many, many publications. So it could be interesting to understand if this would be a useful integration for the Chris community and that for science, we would be more than happy to discuss this integration with any institution that is interested. In this publication, for instance, you see that we have three authors and just for Andrea Bollini is present an affiliation. This is another key characteristics, characteristic of the space Chris over a basic this space. So the space Chris support what we call nested metadata or structured metadata. This means that the affiliation is linked to this specific author. So when you describe a publication, you can eventually specify which affiliation has been used by each individual author in this specific publication. This is important because of course, I could have signed different publications with different affiliations you during my career, because maybe I, I moved between different organizations. So the current organization where I work is not necessarily the one that was a knowledge in a specific publication. And this space Chris allows you to track this level of detail. The other thing that I want to highlight here is that for Bollini Andrea, we also have the ORCID badge. And we don't have this badge for the other two authors. This is because Andrea Bollini has connected his local profile with ORCID. So this is an authenticated ORCID ID. Andrea Bollini certified that he is the person and the system now is entitled to show the ORCID badge. The Space Chris has the richest integration with ORCID of any Chris platform. You can check on the ORCID website about that and allow you to pull and push data from ORCID. Susanna is also linked to a profile in the system, but Michele Menielli is not linked to any profile. This is because the system allows you to track internal authors and external authors at different levels. So you can decide to have profile for internal authors, but not for external authors, authors 
and not all of this internal research will be connected with ORCID if they haven't proceeded with the connection. We can also configure the click on an author to go either to a local profile or to list the author's entire list of publications. I can show you this for instance. This is the public website of the Fraunhofer Institute in Germany and they use this space Chris and we're working with them on the project. So let's take one publication. So in this case, this researcher doesn't have a profile, so it's an external one. And they have the possibility to perform a search. So essentially, these are just all the publications that are linked with this, out, with this other name. In this other case, this publication has an external author, but also two advisors that in this case are internal. So in this specific case, if I click on this name, I'm not going to perform a search, but I moved to the profile of this researcher that on this system is, is presented with a directly different layout, but essentially there are some metadata, some information specific on the researcher and different tab where you can access the list of publication of this researcher, the list of theses that has been supervised and the metrics of this researcher. Also, the configuration of the behavior and the structure of the data of the item page in this space crease is configurable. And in this case, you can do that directly from the user interface as, a, as an administrator. So, if you prefer to move the abstract upper or reorder the data or maybe put the DOI next to the journal name or things like that, all these layout changes can be managed by your administrator working on a configurable on a configuration Excel file that need to be uploaded into the system. And the system will automatically update the user interface according to the configuration that you have uploaded. This is an another major difference compared to this space. In a basic this space, if you want to show an additional metadata, an additional relation, or any information differently than the default, you need to change the source code. In this space, Chris, you don't need to do that. You can just use a configuration file that in this case can be also uploaded via the user interface. If I move to my researcher profile, as you, as you can see, there is a, a metric stamp. In this case, it shows different metrics that are specific of the researcher. So again, there is an integration with Scopus that allows you to get metrics at the outer level. In this case, also open citation provides metrics at outer level. So this can be eventually developed using open citation, if you like. In the other tab, we have put some additional information like the affiliation, the education and the qualification, where in our default data model, you can express the role that was held by the user in which organization, from which date. Again, this is just our default proposal. It's what is suggested at international level as a standard, but you can modify the data model to meet your specific needs. You can also export the data for each record in the system and according to the type of record that you're visiting, you're proposed with different format. You can give a more meaningful name than what we used in our demo, but essentially you can create different templates. We can configure for you different templates that allow you to export the data of a researcher, eventually also just a CSV file or a resume type, so that the researcher can get a PDF file with all the information, including a reference to the publication or project that are linked and so on. Again, this, is, this output is just based on a template that can be configured and adapted to your needs, as you say, from this researcher 
I can move to the organ, to the organizational unit. Also have their own metadata, uh, like country, city, description, information about who the director is, reference to eventually a parent organization, etc. And also show related content. So in the case of the author, I show you that the list of publication of this author was listed into person. In this case, we are at the organization level and we can show the list of all the publication that has been authored by the people that are affiliated with this organization. So you can get the list of publication of the department, publication of the faculties and so on. You can also get the list of the person that work in this specific organization unit. The structure of each record is always the same. So we have metadata, we have a file attached to each record, and we have related content, so other record in the system that reference the record that we are visualizing. All the layout are just the result of different configuration. In the case of organization, we are using a layout where we have different sections of information organized as a vertical menu. In the previous case, if I go back to the researcher profile, the different sections were offered as an horizontal menu. So also, this is just a configuration. And this is the reason why we use two different layout between person, organization, just to showcase that there are different options. Of course, for instance, the vertical menu works better when you adopt a different layout that give more space, horizontally speaking. This is, for instance, the case of the Tech University of Hamburg. They use different layouts, but they give more space to the page, so this look better than in our demo, but just to showcase the different options that you have. And also the organization level, you have an export. You can get a PDF file that can be eventually enriched to fulfill requirements related to an annual report or something like that, that need to be produced at the department level or at the organization level. We haven't talked about project, but it's almost the same. So also for a project, you can have a default data model where you can list the principal investigator, so you can link to the project different initiatives. In this case, we can look to funding related to this specific project. So we get funded, for example, by the European Commission for some developments in the space crisis. And this is the reference to our funding. And thanks to the, the Space Chris project, we have produced some output and you can see the link of the list of all outputs, all publications, in this case that have been linked with this specific project or with our specific funding. And all of these records can be navigated in all directions. So I can move from the publication to the person, to, from the person to the organization, from the project to the publication, and then to the project again, and vice versa, and so on. So we can move back to the back end to show you some additional detail that are relevant. According to the permission that the users have when you visit a page, you can get additional action available and one other major difference between this space crease and the basic this space is that the user interface is much more friendly for normal researchers compared to the ones in the basic this space. This is specifically true when you need to edit the content. So in this space crease, you can set up very sophisticated rules to decide which user can edit what kind of information. So it's not a everything or nothing situation, but you can really decide for the rule that allow the researcher to edit specific metadata of a publication. Or if it's profile without having the possibility to touch other information or to touch specific records. 
When the researcher or the user need to edit this information in this space crease, you're going to use the same interface that he used to create new content. So the researcher is presented with a, with a user interface that contain validation that help the researcher to input the right information. So if you need to enter the link between the publication and the project, you have an autocomplete facility to look up for the project that is not just a raw edit as it appears in the basic this space. So in this case, we're editing the existing information. You see that almost all in the information are fulfilled because we have already populated it. And I want to highlight, for instance, the enter of the author. You can use the add more to add another reference. And in this case, I can look up for an author. So let's say that I search for a colleague of mine. And this is just a demo server. So this person exists in two versions. So it's like two different researchers. And I can pick this name. And you see that there is a green circle here. That means that you have selected this value from your authority. So it could mean, so it could mean that is an internal author according to the configuration. And also the affiliation has been pre-filled because the system helps you saying, okay, I will propose you by default for this publication to use the current affiliation of this user. But if you're describing a past affiliation, this could be eventually wrong and you have the possibility to update that. This is one of the latest features that we worked on. This demonstrates that we also integrate with the registry of research organization. So this is a record example, a drawer registry. This is one of the latest features that we worked on. This demonstrates that we also integrate with the registry of research organization. So this is a record example a drawer registry. One interesting thing of working with this data is that when we work on group of information, you're able to rearrange this information all together. So I can move Bolini Andrea into first place or into second place, or organizational unit of Bolini Andrea and Balbi are moved together. So these two information stay together as a group of information. In this way, we will be able to collect references between publication and person that have different semantics. So in some cases, some people could be author, uh, could be author, other could be editor, other could be translators, etc. Out of box in this space, Chris, we can just add another metadata here to say to roll. So you have a drop down here where you can pick if it's the author or the translator, the editor. And this information will be moved together. So you will get a single list of reference, but for each individual reference, you can specify if it is an author or an editor, etc. And this cannot be done with a basic this space. Another thing that I want to show is when you're going to create new content. You usually work with the My this Space. So the dashboard from where any user in the system can create new content or access previous created content. In this case, you can create new content dropping some file. It could be just a PDF file of your scholarly output, for example. The system asks what kind of information you're going to create. Let's say that we're creating a publication. I'm uploading the file and the system will automatically extract as many information as possible from the file. So just to show you what I've uploaded, uh, this file, there is nothing special. It's just a real article that Andrea Bollini wrote. There are no metadata in this PDF file. So what is used here 
is a machine vision technology that we, that we use an external open source project that is named Crobit that is able to look to the PDF file, recognize the more important parts of the content. So, for example, the title usually is in the first page with a larger font. And using this sort of criteria, these informations are extracted. So you see that the title, the date are extracted and, and many other uh, aspects that I want to highlight that is particularly interesting here. The authors that has been extracted are automatically matched with, with the directory of your researcher. And you see that different colors are attributed to different authors. The reason for that is because if you inspect Bollini Andrea, is currently orange because this is the best guess, guess. And the system would like to get confirmation that is the right one. This is also a configuration parameter. You can decide to trust what the system does without confirmation. But if I click on this button, you see that essentially there is just a single Bollini Andrea that have an affiliation that is an internal author. All these other Bollini Andrea that you see here come from ORCID and have different ORCID ID in this case because uh, uh, we have created uh, in the ORCID sandbox because we make a lot of tests and we have a lot of different versions of this record on ORCID. So I can just confirm the internal author in the case of Pascarelli, the situation is different because if I inspect here the option, I see that there are two different internal authors that have the same name. So I have a 50-50 chance that is the right one. So in this case, as the system have decided to use the first one, but also the second one could be a good option. The color would just thread and this helps you to keep good data for your system. Another thing that I want to show is to create a record that we already have in the system. So let's start from an empty record. We just put the title and the system say submission is valid, checking missing field or in general the validation, it found potential dupl duplicates. So the system will detect automatically that we have a potential match. This is done using the title, but of course it's much better when it's done using identifier. So this also work if I use a different title, but the same DOI, or that is much more accurate as a potential match. And this requires that the user confirm or reject the potential match that has been identified by the system itself. Other than defining everything manually or importing or extracting information from a PDF file, you can also just drag and drop a file and the metadata will be extracted from the file. But you can also look up external systems. So in the case of publication, you are presented with a list of external sources that could be free or could be subject to a subscription. In this case, you need to have a subscription with these databases like Scopus. And the system allows you to search these external systems and import the proposed results. Just to clarify what I mean when I say that this space Chris has a much more user-friendly interface for edit data compared to basic space. When you need to edit data in a basic space, you are presented with this interface that is also available in this space Chris, of course, if you need to do something very sophisticated. But essentially, your researcher should be able to manage metadata going in this page, where the metadata are presented in this really technical format, and they have much more complexity, where they need to input manually an exact text that doesn't have any guide support for entering and check. Moreover, other than this facility in terms of, of user interface, 
One major difference is in terms of permissions. In the basic space, you can only give to users the possibility to edit the record or not edit the record. You don't have an intermediate solution. In the space Chris, you can provide different edit options. Each edit option could be restricted to specific users, and each edit option could give access to a specific subset of data, and this data will be managed with a friendly user interface. So, let me show you also another aspect for researchers profiling the space Chris. You can customize the URL, so instead of then have the research profile assigned with just a UID that will be difficult to remind and remember and not nice to share across the web, you can decide to customize your URL using your name. Another important aspect is then in the space crease, you can also decide to have individual value bind to a specific security. And this is a very le relevant for the privacy. So you can allow your researcher to decide if their email address or birthday or gender is publicly visible or restricted to administrators or other users. So in this case, Andreas Bolini's birthday could be uh, public, but I could also decide to restrict the access. So just this piece of information uh, is visible or not visible. And this rule will only be applied to the profile of that particular researcher, not to other research profiles. So you have the possibility to decide security constraints globally at the repository level. It's your institutions that can decide which informations are visible to what kind of user. But you can also decide that some information are up to the researcher or in, in the end of the owner of the record to decide which level of visibility the specific information needs to be. As you see there, there are some information that could be protected. So in this case, is the ORCID ID, because if you want to set the ORCID ID, you need to go through the, the authentication process, but you cannot edit it directly. As you're going to synchronize the data of the researcher with your system, you don't want to have this data managed directly in this space crease, because the source that counts is the other system. And so in this space crease, this should be kept in read-only mode. And here you see an example of complex information and how is it is collected in a tabular way. So if you want to collect the role, the organization, the start date, and date of my affiliation, for example, uh, for education, etc. Another thing that is worth to mention is about the file. So when we talk about the file, each individual file can be associated with different access conditions. So we can configure which metadata we want to collect at the file level. But for each file, we can decide if it is open access, if it is under embargo or administrator only. And we can activate to request a copy feature that means that restricted file that cannot be downloaded by the anonymous user or the current logged in user can be requested as a copy. There can be two different approaches. The first one is just related to the fact that if you want to target this request to the internal author in this space, by default, these requests will be targeted to the user that have created the record. That is not necessary one of the other, uh, what we have proposed uh, as another option is to enhance this behavior so that the request copy will be sent to the internal author when the internal author leaves the institution. In this case, what this space Chris will do is to forward the request to a predefined email address that could be your repository manager or a research office or someone that could help it with this specific scenario. When the internal author leaves, the space scripts can also disable that and present a page where you inform the user that the author of this item cannot be longer reached. So there's no way to get the copy and we propose two different developments to address 
at different levels this requirement. Now, let's move to see a demonstration of the content and user statistics module. So, in this space, Chris, the content and usage statistics is provided out of the box. If you look at the search results, we can customize the filter, we can customize the visualization. So, what can be done with that is to create dashboards that allow you to perform specific analysis of the content in the repository. When I'm logged in, all the search results also provide an export option. I need to decide a consistent set of things to export because, of course, people and publications are completely different things and they're not suitable to be expressed in the same way. So, if I export, for instance, publication, I can decide to export them in an Excel file and I can decide to export all of them or to only export a selected list that could be the current page or a subset of the current page. In this way, you can get also all the information in an Excel file and process this information offline. This configuration can be adapted so the public search is not necessarily the same that is provided on the advanced search. So you can, if you can, you can change the filter that you have to perform some analysis and you can configure different visualizations that are more useful for content analysis than for the public search. So essentially, use the same functionality of search that is used for the public search, also for internal purposes with a different configuration that allows you to analyze the different aspects that you're interested in. So if the question is, for instance, how many publications have a file, you have the information here to perform the analysis. Or you can also create facets related to how many publications are open access, how many are under embargo. So this is just a matter of different configurations or faceting and of the visualization that you enable. In this model, this is in respect to analyze the content that you have. In terms of statistics, when you visit the statistics, for instance, at the individual publication level, you can see from which area are the publications are visited. You can check the visit over month. You can refine the statistics focusing on a specific time period. You can move to different levels. So instead of focus on the statistics of an individual publication, you can move to an author and you can look the statistics of this author and it will include the statistics about the usage of the specific author profile. So how many times the profile has been accessed and from where. But I can also look to the statistics of the publication that are related to this researcher. So this is the total number of visualization of statistic of publication that are linked to this profile. The same also for project, and you can get different visualizations by month or the city from where these data are mostly accessed. These statistics are available also for specific organizational units. These type of statistics are available at any level of aggregation. So if I move to an organization unit into statistics, the first report is again, just the number of visualization of the org unit page. But the second tab show the statistics related to publication that are directly linked with, the, with this organization. In this case, we probably don't have publication directly linked with this organization, but also statistics of publication that are linked to this organization via person. So are the statistics that the publication that are authored by a person that is affiliated with this organization unit. And this is the geographic area, globally speaking, for this publication. But we can focus on which is the most viewed publication for this specific organization. And the same for download. And we can move also to the project or we can figure 
or we can configure to a view uh, publication by project so you can follow the graph of relationship according to your needs. This needs to be configured, so you can also include statistics in the organization that are not directly linked with the organization, but linked to the organization via another, via another record that could be the person, could be the project, etc. In the content and user statistics, you also have access to login statistics or workflow statistics that give you information about how many actions have been performed and by who. If you have a workflow to review and to approve new records are created, you're also able to have statistics at the wall site level. So if you want to see the statistics in general for all the repository, these are the global statistics for all the repository where I can see which is the most viewed publication in the repository. You can also export both the map and you can export all the tables of these statistics in Excel or CSV for further processing. The platform includes a CSL citation language engine that is able to export to publication in different standards, including TAP, but also Chicago, MLA, or many, many other. And according to spe uh, specifically for APA, we should be very detailed about which version exactly you want to use because there are differences between the different editions. Also, in the PDF file, we can use the CSL processing so we can configure the system so that the publication list included in the curricula is processed according to the APA format. You can have evidence of that in the St. Gallen University instance that we host and is, is currently using APA. They have these researchers and has a lot of output. And let me export. So in this case, the output is different, of course, is branded with the university. And you see also the ORCID is included in the publication for the specific case of St. Gallen. They are more sophisticated in the way that they want to list uh, the publication because they want to aggregate for publication type. So this is journal article first, book after, book section, etc. There are differences when you are in the editing mode because the system respects the security. In this example, I'm not logged in in the St. Gallen University repository so I'm only able to export public information. Maybe there are additional publications that have been hidden by the researcher or not yet approved, and this would be not included in the export if I'm logged in. I can configure the export to also include this content. And of course, this export option will be only available for you that you are logged in and will include this information that are not yet validated. Another feature is about hiding and ordering publication. So as one of the options other than edit, as you see, I also have manage research output, but this apply to any kind of linked content. So this also apply to project funding or anything else that they could link to the searcher. So in this case, I have the full list of my publication that I can search, I can filter, and I can decide to select a couple of publications that are more relevant for me so that they will be proposed as top ranked in my curriculum. So are moved at the very top of my publication list. So I can just click on select to take another publication. And on that, this has been selected. I can put in a specific place of my list. So this will become my second publication. This is my first and I can reorder. But I can also decide to hide the specific, a specific publication. Hide means that 
this publication is authored by the researcher. So I'm not unlinking this publication from the profile, but I'm just deciding to hide from the curriculum because maybe it's an old public publication or related to a research area that the researcher is not act actively involved into. So it's still something authored by the researcher, but it does not have a prominent place in the profile. So you can manage this sort of relation. This is also true at any level. So the same feature is also available at the organizational level. So if a department want to create a selected list of publication, they can do that. And you can decide that this feature can be used by the director of the department, by the secretary of the department. So you can decide the security rules that are behind that. When we talk about security rules, it's important to know that this space Chris understands the context. In basic this space, when you give a permission, you always give a permission to a defined group of users. So you can create a group that is named librarians, for example, and you give permission to this group. In this space Chris, you can get and you go you can go much farther with that because you can use the context. And what I mean is that you can assign permission to the author of the publication. So there is no group of authors because everyone will be author of something. But you can say this publication can be authored by the author. Or you can say this publication can be authored by the director of the department of the authors because they have a supervision over all the production of the research. And I'm just using publication in our example, but is, this is true and also more useful maybe for project and for funding, where you have office at the department level, at the faculty level, that help and support the researcher. The security configuration is one important part. At the start of the project, we will agree about the general rules, like the authors are able to edit this aspect of their publication, but not this other aspect. And we also need that the director of the, the departments are able to perform this particular action and this particular action. So all this type of security level can be configured during the project with For Science. This configuration, when decided, will be applied to the system in the space Chris system and is done via several configurations file. So it doesn't require coding, but required an advanced configuration. So it's not something that you can change from the user interface, but it's done together and is part of the project documentation. I just want to clarify one aspect on workflow because workflow has a very specific meaning in this space and in this space crease. Workflow is the process that you can enable to review record before that these records are fully accepted into the repository. When you start a new submission, when you start to create a new record essentially, this record is in the workspace of the author and is only visible to the author. And by default, in this space, Chris is also visible to the co author. So, this is another improvement of this space, Chris, compared to a basic this space. So, if a co author starts a submission, all the co authors are able to know that this submission is ongoing so that this reduces the risk of duplication of effort because often publications are co-authored by many people at the same institution and any co-author can help with this description. When the researcher has finished to describe the record and click on the deposit button, we can configure a workflow that is responsible to approve this record and this workflow can be as simple as a sequence of steps 
where according to the type of record that you're going to create a publication or a project, for instance, different group of users will be involved into reviewing the record, apply modifications and approve the record. Or we can also customize the workflow in a more sophisticated way. And also in this case, we can say, okay, the approval need to be performed by some user that they have a specific relation with the author. So the approval of a project go to the director of the department where the principal investigator work. This is a kind of configuration that we can apply in this space crease. I also want to clarify one part of our answer because we talk about content and statistics add-on, but also about the analytics add-on. The analytics add-on is a separate add-on for the platform that is based on an external application. And I'm going to demonstrate that right now. The content and statistics add-on allows you to get a lot of insight about your content and your statistics. But we need to configure the kind of report and visualization that you want with configuration file that are quite sophisticated. So we can do that for you or your technicians can do that, but are prepared in advance. So we decide which report need to be produced, which visualizations, which filters are available and so on. Once that is configured, you have this view over your data. If you change your mind, you need to modify the configuration of the platform to add new facets, new visualizations, etc. The analytics add-on instead is a step farther. So it allows you to have a self-service platform where you can configure different dashboards, different views over your data without going over configuration file, but just using the user interface. So it gives you a bit more flexibility in terms of reuse of the data in different ways. We implemented that uh, integration uh, open source solution that is named OpenSearch. The OpenSearch stack is essentially the same stack of Elastic, but it's open. So Elastic has a closed license. OpenSearch is the open source fork of the Elastic technology. And that's what we implemented for this add-on. When you log in on OpenSearch, you are provided with the possibility to access or create a new dashboard. Essentially, a dashboard is a view over your data, is a set of report and visualization that you can create. We have created one report for a demo repository that we use. And here you see that there are some visualization about this data, like the total number of publications that have, be, that have a visualization of how many of these publications are peer reviewed or not, uh, peer reviewed uh, the distribution of this publication year by year or by type, article, thesis, etc. You can also see different keywords or have different distribution over different departments. For example, top author, how much productive are the different researchers? And you can also create visualization that combine bibli bibliographic information with metrics. So in this case, we have generated some fake data for number of citations. And here you see how the different departments behave on average and median in terms of number of citations for their publication. But also we can create something more sophisticated like a heat map to see where the publication usually are placed in terms of frequency for a specific number of citation or impact factor or whatever metric you would like to consider when I say whatever metric you like to consider, of course, I'm assuming that you're able to provide such data. 
So this data can be provided automatically via integration, such in the case of the Scopus citation number or the web citation number, if you have the subscription. But it's also possible to integrate metric that you have available elsewhere by other means. So you could have some metrics calculated manually that are qualitative evaluation of your publication that you have in a spreadsheet or that you decide to collect as metadata in the CRIS system. And you also have the details about the record that are included in this visualization. Everything here is interactive. So we can click, for example, non-peer-reviewed article and we can get all the other visualization updated, including, of course, the detailed list. One important aspect of that is that you can go into edit mode and you can change the way that this dashboard is presented or the single information are visualized. So you can make changes just related to the visualization. So reorder the component or you can go farther and edit the visualization and decide that this should be no longer visualized as a pie chart, but maybe uh, as a bar chart, or you want to use different condition of your data to present this, this visualization. So you can configure the visualization to use a specific metadata. So if we don't have included a specific visualization in the dashboard, it's very likely that using this tool to find the missing visualization in the dashboard from the user interface. One other important feature that this tool provides is the possibility to access the data in the underlying data as they were just as a SQL database with a table with many columns that are all the data that you have configured and you can query this database via SQL. This means that you can use this tool as data source for other visualization tools that could be Microsoft Power BI or could be Excel just using ex external data source for visualization or any other visualization tool that allow you to connect to a SQL source and of course this is safe because you are connected to a source that is read only and is completely separated from the production system so the load of this data will not affect the load of the production server. Now I will show you a demonstration of synchronization of the ORCID account. So as you see, it's possible in this space Chris to use different authentication methods and you can eventually also log in via ORCID. You're not required to enable the login via ORCID to use the ORCID integration. So you can still connect with ORCID and push and pull information to ORCID also if you don't allow user to log into the system via ORCID. But just to show the full life cycle, of course, we're using the sandbox environment of ORCID. So it's not the real production for obvious reasons as we're using a demo data. I can log in in with uh, this account that we created on ORCID Sandbox for demo purposes. And as you can see, this account is linked to the same administrator account that we were using before. So this is also interesting because this means that a single user can log in eventually with multiple providers without duplicating the record. We have successfully, uh, we have recently completed a project with ORCID that was funded directly by ORCID and the Global Participation Fund program of ORCID to improve the login flow. So the fact is that when you have multiple identity providers, there are a lot of edge scenarios where the user login interface with an entity provider and when you log in with the other entity provider, maybe using different credentials, and it's very easy to create duplicate accounts. The result of our project is essentially that when you log in via ORCID, if we don't recognize an account that already exists, we help the user to prevent the duplication of the account. So we ask the user to double check if it has already an account 
to provide an item information to put together the account if an account already exists. Once that you are logged in, you can access your researcher profile that is similar to the one that we used before. As you see, this account is already connected to ORCID, but it could be the case that it is not connected and what you have is an open ORCID setting page here that allows you to manage this flow. So if it was not connected with ORCID, of course, I have to connect to ORCID with this button that will go to the authorization flow to be sure that I'm the right person and to get a token that allows the space Chris to write into my ORCID profile on the ORCID registry. Once I'm connected, I can decide to manage manually all the synchronization aspect, or I could decide to rely on the platform to over the night to synchronize everything that need to be pushed to ORCID automatically. This is something that the individual researcher can decide, and you can also decide which aspect of the CRIS data need to be synchronized with ORCID. So you can just decide to synchronize only the publication or the funding or biographic information. According to this setting, the system maintains automatically a queue of record that need to be synchronized with ORCID. If I decided to use the batching automatic synchronization overnight, this quick will be processed and essentially the day after will be always empty and I don't need to do anything. As we left it in manual mode here, you have a couple of examples about this is a new information that has been added to my profile. So a reference, a link to a website in the profile, or these are all publication. And these three publications are completely new. So they're missing the ORCID side, and I should create on the ORCID side. This one was already pushed to ORCID, but I made some changes locally, and I need to push this update on ORCID. We can also batch import from ORCID to the space Chris. I want to open my profile on ORCID and here you will see that there are several publications and this one is the one that we had just updated and here you get all the metadata, all the information that has been sent and as you see it's just been updated. We can look at the importing feature from ORCID. There are two ways. I can import a publication from an external source. Here, I have also ORCID, and I can put the ORCID ID. In this case, this is because this import is intended also for librarians, so that they can help assist other researchers. It's not related to the individual researcher and you can get information that are available in the ORCID profile that are not yet in the Space Crisis system. So they're not presenting the same information that they have already pushed to ORCID, of course. So these are the records that are available on the ORCID side, and I can decide to start a new submission, deciding which collection I want to put this content, the information available are imported and I can provide the missing information from there. The other option is for a normal researcher, the way that they can import publication from ORCID is more direct. So what our system does is to automatically get from ORCID the information when a new publication is added to the ORCID profile. And when this occur, the system suggests to the researcher to import this publication also in the space crease. So this comes in the form of a suggestion for the researcher to import the content. This can be used both by the individual researcher. So here you are seeing the page dedicated to the administrator, where the administrator can see all the researchers that are currently have pending suggestion to import content. And this is the case on this same demo. We have some import suggestion for Susanna. So I can see these suggestions. 
but if I'm logged in with the administrator to assist Susanna, but also Susanna, if she's logged in into the system directory, she will get a prompt saying that there are suggestions for you. You can look to the suggestions and you can immediately decide if you want to import this suggestion or not. If you say no to the suggestion, it will not present it to you any longer. The reason why you see a score here is because this system is potentially not restricted only to ORCID. So with ORCID is provided out of the box with the ORCID integration in the space crease. If you have the ORCID AP key, you will get the suggestion from ORCID, but eventually you can also get suggestions from other providers. For instance, we're able to query the open air graph and search for content that seem to be written by your researcher in the open graph and suggest this content to be imported into the repository. So these are all additional providers that need to be configured and connected to your this space Chris instance. But if we connect these providers, also this provider will be presented in this page. And for them, the score could be different because of course, if a suggestion comes from ORCID, it's quite sure that this is your publication. But if we guess that this is your publication just using your first name and last name, there are a lot of chances that the match could be a false positive. And what we currently do is to use some heuristic to understand how good could be this match. And that is based on the fact that we are matching the full name. So if we're really matching Mornati Susanna is much better that we're just matching with Mornati S. And we're also using date that could be present in the Susanna's profile to understand if this publication could make sense or not. Because of course, if this publication is written before Susanna's birth, it's not Susanna's publication. But also, if it's written before or after the graduation or other education achievements, it could give an indication about good, how good the match is. And this algorithm can be integrated with other check, like implement something that will verify if there are co-authors that are normal co-authors co of Susanna in this case. If the topic is related to the topic of interest of Susanna, that can improve our capacity of guessing. So if we decide to import, import that, we can just proceed with accept and import and we will go to suggestion has been imported and we can complete eventually any missing information in this publication. So we import all with guessing mechanism that we have already discussed. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope that this demonstration was very helpful and useful for you and your institution. If you would like to have more information about For Science and our services such as this space and this space Chris, you can send us an email at info at forscience.com or you can go to our website forscience.com. Thank you again for your attention and I'll see you into the next video.